Hello and welcome to the iBuy Cafe. I'm your host, Sri Roy. This is episode 113, and today is October 13th, 2024. Happy pre Halloween to everyone. Here at the cafe, we typically take an in depth look at an iOS app. But today, we're going to cover about 25 different features that's inside iOS 18. So before we get started, I want to personally say thank you to each of you for attending this cafe in person. And for all those who'll be listening to this cafe, either on our website, our podcast, or in our YouTube channel. And if you find any of our videos helpful, please hit the like and subscribe to our channel. So the next time our very own Julie uploads any of our videos, you'll get notification. So we are iBug today. The website is ibugtoday.org. We are a nonprofit organization and we offer 21 activities each month. All of them are free. This includes 12 technical and nine social events. And they're all available in our Zoom platform. And uh, we made it very easy. Just use the same link that you use today. So let's take a look at what is going on this week here at iBug Today. And we truly have a very busy week. All times that I say are central. We have the Monday night buzz from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And this is an open forum where you can ask any questions about any of the iDevices. And during the halftime, we'll give you an opportunity to guess some clues on what our movie will be on the following Friday. And then stick around after the Monday Night Buzz. At 9 p.m., we have our post-social gathering. Tuesday, October 15th, we have the iBug Mac Buzz. It's hosted by our very own Herbie from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. This is the perfect time for you to ask any questions about your Mac. Wednesday, October 16th, we have the iBug Android Insight hosted by Ava and Hershey. It is from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And if you have any questions about the Amazon or your Android devices, we may just have the answer you're looking for. Thursday, October 17th, it's our iBug Trekkie Talk. It's hosted by Kenny and Jody, and it's from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And they are reviewing Deep Space Nine, Season 2, Episode 8 and 9. And every Friday night, is our movie night. It's an audio described, audio only movie. And the entertainment starts at 7.15 p.m. Then at 7.30 p.m., we will entertain you with some music and some trivia and some jokes. And our movie starts at 8 p.m. Stick around after the movie because we have an after movie discussion and trivia. You can listen to all our trainings on an Apple podcast, YouTube, The A Lady, and on our website. So now it's time for everyone to introduce yourself. I've got an icebreaker question. It's very simple. Are you running iOS 17? Or are you running iOS 18? And your answer just needs to be 17 or 18. Let me know who you are, where you're calling from, and if this is your first time here at the cafe, let me know also. So Herbie, if we can just go ahead and unmute everyone. This is Herbie, 18. Welcome, Herbie. This is Robert and Chandler, 18. Welcome. Pete in Jacksonville, and I'm on 18. Uh, welcome, Pete. This is Columbus, 18. This is Karen in Philadelphia, and I'm on 17. Welcome. This is Gigi in Houston, and I'm not on 18 yet. Welcome. This is Desi in Franklin, Tennessee, and I am on 18. This is welcome. Paul in Arlington, Virginia, and I'm on 18. Marty in Philly, and I'm on 16. Welcome. Rachel in Fairfax, Virginia, 18. Welcome. Helene in Woodstock, New York, on the one right before 18. Okay, welcome. Greg. Ned from Texas, Mary. 17. All right, welcome. Gregory from South Carolina, 18. All right, welcome. I'm Georgia, 17. All right, I heard Gloria. Who, was, who else? Mary Linda from Georgia, just downloaded 18. Haven't used it. All right, welcome. Sarah in Vermont. Oops. Oh, welcome, Sarah. Hi. Um, I, I assume you're saying what, um, if we're on 18? Yeah, if you're running iOS 18, are you running iOS 17 right now? I'm running 18.01. Great. Welcome. Hi. Linda from Texas, 17. Okay, welcome both of you. Um, Angelo and 18. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rosetta. Rosetta Stone from Conyers, Georgia. Hi, everybody. And what version are you running? Oh, 
I'm still on 16. I don't dare change up. My phone will go crazy. It's already crazy. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Who else? This is Dan from Southern California, 17. All right. Welcome, Dan. Uh, who else? Cynthia in Houston, first time at the cafe. I'm not sure what I'm running. Okay. And Cynthia, how did you hear about us? Um, well, I heard about you guys from uh, my doctor, Chang, and um, they just had a meeting on uh, Friday, and I told the group about you guys as well. Well, I truly appreciate that, and then welcome. Thank you. Uh, who else? This is Greg in Texas. From... Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that Greg? Yeah, Greg on 18. All right, welcome, Greg. And who's the other person? This is Inny from Iowa, and I have 16. 16. Okay. All right, who else? Jody in New Hampshire, and I'm running 17.7. All right, welcome, Jody. This is Deb from Kansas, 18. Oh, welcome, Deb. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Going once? Mm -hmm. Welcome, Joe. 18. 18. All right. Anyone else? This is Sri. I'm from Virginia and I'm running 18. So I first want to say that we cannot cover all the new features in iOS 18. If we miss something, definitely bring it up on our Monday night buzz call. So today's presentation is broken into three parts. Basically, what I did is the first half is going to be about 32 minutes long. I'm going to cover some of the applications that are running or uh, taking the benefits of using iOS 18. The second part is about 24 minutes. It's going to take a look at all the settings that are tied to iOS 18. And the final part is about 20 minutes where I'm going to talk about some of the benefits of running iOS 18 on accessibility and voiceover. And so after each of the parts of our presentation, we'll open it up with some questions and comments. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started with the first part of the presentation. So Herbie, if you can just start it up. Namaste. This is Sri, and welcome to the iBug Cafe. And today, it's all about 18, the iOS on your iPhone. There are many new features that were released in iOS 18, and in today's presentation, we'll cover about 25 of these new features that became available. First, let's take a look at what devices support iOS 18. From an iPhone perspective, if you have an SC second gen or newer, or if you currently have an iPhone 10R or newer, then you can install iOS 18. And when it comes to Apple intelligence, on the iPhone, it is supported on 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, and all of the iPhone 16 series. And just keep in mind that some of the features may not be available on the older devices. And if you're looking for some additional information about some of these products and how they work, Pete Lane and I did a intro to voiceover at the iBike Cafe on September 8th, episode 112. And on September 28th, Herbie Allen covered all the iPhone 16 hardware specs at the iBug workshop, episode 154. And during our next workshop on October 26th, episode 155, Herbie will go in great detail explaining how the Braille screen input works on the new iOS 18 on your iPhone. So definitely check out those presentations either on our website, on our YouTube channel, or on your favorite podcast. So in today's presentation, I broke it into four categories. We'll take a look at some of the new iOS features inside some of the applications, inside settings, inside accessibility, and conclude the presentation by taking a look at some of the new features inside VoiceOver. We'll start off by taking a look at iOS 18 and how it works with application. You currently have an app that you want to make sure that no one has access to it except you. Previously, with iOS 17, you would have to create a shortcut for you to lock an app on your iPhone. But with iOS 18, this feature is available within some of these apps. And also, with my phone, I'll be using Face ID. So let's see how it works. First, I'll show you how to set up the Face ID security on Safari and then I'll show you how to remove it. One finger, touch and explore until I hear Safari. Safari. And then I'll perform a long press. One finger, double tap and hold, or a one finger, triple tap. Remove app button. Or swipe right until I hear require face ID button. And on devices that has a home button, it'll require you to use a touch ID. Require face ID button. Double tap. Alert, require face ID for Safari. Apple's explanation. This app will require Face ID or your passcode to open or show content in other apps. App content will not appear in notification previews or spotlight. Swipe right. Require Face ID button. Swipe right. Cancel button. Swipe left until you require Face ID button. Require Face ID button. Double tap. I'll have the camera look at my face. Alert. Fa face ID authenticated. Doc. Safari. Now that I set up that it requires Face ID to open Safari, let's take a look at what happens when I try to open it. One finger touch and explore on Safari. 
Safari. Double tap. I'm looking at the phone so it can recognize my face. Alert. Face ID authenticated. Safari. Favorites. Even though I have this app locked with face ID, it opened it right away. Now let's take a look at what happens when it doesn't recognize my face. Once again, I'll do a touch and explore until I hear Safari. Safari. Double tap. Alert. Face ID required to open Safari. 5. Enter iPhone passcode. Now I'll need to enter my passcode in order for me to get into Safari. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Safari. Favorites. If I want to remove the security lock on Safari, I'll do a one finger touch and explore until I hear Safari. Safari. And then one finger triple tap. Remove app button. Swipe right until I hear don't require face ID button. Don't require face ID button. Double tap. Once again, I'll make sure it recognizes my face in order to verify the removal of the security. Face, face ID authenticated. Photos. Doc. Safari. Now the security has been removed. Keep in mind that this feature only works on some of the apps. But if you do want to lock an app, this is the way to lock it and unlock it when using iOS 18. Previously, I showed you how you can lock the Safari app. But also with iOS 18, if locking the app is just not enough, you can also hide the app. In this case, I'm going to hide the Call Annie app. Now, when it comes to hiding an app, I do want to give you some heads up. First, it will require Face ID or Touch ID or Passcode unhide it. Second, as of iOS 18.0, you cannot hide any of the Apple native apps. So with that said, let's go take a look at how to hide the app. First, I'm going to locate the Call Annie app on my home screen by doing a touch and explore until I hear it. Call Annie. One finger triple tap. Edit home screen button. Swipe right until I hear require face ID for call Annie button. Require face ID button. Double tap. Alert. Require face ID for call Annie. Apple's explanation. This app will require face ID or your passcode to open or show content in other apps. App content will not appear in notification previews or spotlight. Swipe right until I hear hide and require face ID button. Hide and require face ID button. Double tap. Alert. Face ID authenticated. Hide Call Annie, heading. Apple's explanation. This app will no longer be visible on your iPhone, except in a few places such as setting. Face ID or your passcode will be required to reveal. Open or use Siri with the app. Obscured app appearance. This app will be obscured on your home screen and in a folder for hidden apps in app library. You will not receive notifications, calls, or critical alerts from this app. Swipe right and I hear hide app button. Hide app button. Double tap. First, I want to get to the home screen. Batteries, widget. One finger touch and explore until I hear it on my home screen. Settings. Double tap. The settings layout has completely changed in iOS 18, which I covered in a different part of the presentation. To quickly access the app, four finger single tap near the bottom of the screen lands on the apps button. Apps button. Double tap. Selected app. Amazon Music button. Four finger single tap near the bottom of the screen lands on the hidden apps button. Just remember, it will require a face ID or a password or a touch ID to open it. Hidden apps button. Double tap. Hit face ID. Face ID authenticated. Settings. Apps. Back button. Two finger swipe down. Hidden apps. Heading. Call Annie button. Double tap will not open the app in this section. I would have to go to the hidden folder in the app library to be able to access it. So let's go find Call Annie in the hidden folder located in the app library. I currently have 15 home screens, and just remember, the app library is located after the last home screen. Three finger swipe left. Showing app library. On the app library, four finger single tap near the bottom of the screen lands on hidden. Hidden. Double tap. Al Face ID authenticated. And if I ever decide I do not want call any app to be hidden. Hidden. Call any. One finger triple tap. Delete app button. Swipe right like here. Don't require face ID button. Don't require face ID button. Double tap. Al face ID authenticated. App library. Search field. I do want to mention one important thing. In my example, I had call Annie in home screen one. Then I moved it to the hidden folder inside the app library. Then I removed it from the hidden folder. But one thing it does not do is restore it to the original location. In this case, call Annie was in the home screen. But now it just resides in the app library. And to find this app, I would need to go to the education folder. Education folder. Eight apps. Double tap. Swipe right. I hear the call any app. Call any. So with iOS 18, you can now hide an app as well as unhide it. One of the new features is the ability to do calculation in certain apps. 
Let's take a look at how we can do this inside the Notes app. To save some time, I've already opened up a blank note. Note, text field, is editing, word mode, insertion point at start. One finger touch and explore on the virtual keyboard until I hear numbers. Numbers, five, six. That is 56. Symbols, star, 56. That is, multiply by 56. Numbers, seven, eight, nine. That is 789. Symbols, plus, numbers, four, five. That's 45. Symbols, equals. Computed result 5029. So instead of pulling out the calculator app, you can now do calculation inside the Notes app. With iOS 18 and the Message app, we now have some new features. We have the ability to add some flair or some pizzazz to a message. So let's take a look at how to set up these two features on the Message app. To save some time, I'm already inside the Message app and created a new text message. Message, text field, is editing. Hello Rita and Jasmine. I hope both of you are doing well. Missing both of you from India. Word mode. Insertion point at end. One thing I need to make sure is that I have predictive text selected. Let's take a look at how I can tell if I have turned on or off. I swipe right and I'll bypass the send button. And you'll notice I do not have predictive text because it takes me straight to the letter Q in the virtual keyboard. Send button. Q. Quebec. Predictive text provides three separate words that are located right above the virtual keyboard along with open text effects button, which is required if I want to use any of the new iOS 18 text effects. So let's take a look at how to enable this. To save some time, I've already opened settings and I'm currently inside general. General. Swipe right till I hear keyboard. Keyboard button. Double tap. Keyboards. Two. Button. Swipe right until I hear predictive text button. This is a toggle on off button. I'll make sure mine is turned on. Predictive text. Switch button. Off. On. I currently have the message app open, four finger swipe left. Messages, message, text field. Now that I have predictive text selected, let's take a look at what happens when I swipe right past the send button. Send, button, cap I, we, I'm, open text effects, button. As you can tell, I'm presented with three suggestive words as well as the open text effects button. Double tap, two finger swipe down. Bold text, italicized text, underline text. Strike through text. And now I'm presented with some special effects that I could use in a text message. Big. Small. Shade. Nod. Explode. Ripple. Bloom. Jitter. One thing I noticed when I opened the text effects button is there is no dismiss button. One thing I did try to do is do a touch and explore around the screen, but I don't hear a cancel or a back button. My solution to this is to do a touch and explore until I hear the apps button. Apps button. Double tap. Camera. Then I perform the scrub gesture. And that took me out of the open text effects button. Now that I got that out of the way, and I showed you how you can close the open text effects button, let's take a look at how I can create some effects into the text message that I created. I'm going to invoke the rotor to words and move the cursor to the word well. Words. One finger flick down, moves the cursor to one word at a time to the right. Are doing well, period. Invoke the rotor to text selection. Text selection. Flick up. Or flick down until I hear word selection. Word selection. Since the cursor is at the end of the word well, flick left selects the word. Well, selected. Next, I want to swipe right. But before I do that, I'm going to invoke the rotor back to words. That's because it's currently in text selection. And if I swipe right, it's going to unselect the word well. Words. Next, swipe right until I hear open text effects button. Open text effects button. Double tap. I'm going to bold text the word well. Once I hear bold, bold text, double tap, bold text, selected. Since I'm still in the text effects section, let's take a look at what voiceover says when I do a one finger touch and explore on the text message. Message, one effect, text field, is editing, well, selected. Now before I send this text message, I want to add one more effect. Next effect I'm going to put in is in the word India. Once again, I'll invoke the rotor to word to move the cursor to the end of the word India. Words, India exclamation mark. To save some time, I'm going to go ahead and select the word India. India. Selected. Or swipe right to hear open text effects button. Open text effects button. Double tap. Bold text. This time, I want to underline the word India. Swipe right to hear underline text. Underline text. Double tap. Underline text. Selected. Message. One effect. Text field. Is editing. India selected. And if you're wondering, how can we tell what has been selected? Well, let's take a look at that now. But before I can do that, I need to bring the insertion point either to the beginning or to the end of the text message. 
Otherwise, it will just repeat what the last open text effect was. Double tap. Insertion point at start. Now if I want VoiceOver to read what effects are in that text message, I can invoke the rotor and go to text effects. Text effects. This rotor option becomes available once something has been created in the open text effect. And then click up or click down. And it'll read all the different effects that has been created. Well, bold, button, India, underline, button, message, two effects. And that is how to create open text effect using iOS 18 on the message app. The second feature that I want to take a look at is how I can send a text message at a later date and time. This feature has been available inside the mail app. And now with iOS 18, this feature is now available inside the message app. Once again, I'll do a one finger touch and explore until I hear the apps button. Apps button. Double tap. Camera. Inside the apps button is where I'll find the send later. Swipe right until I hear it. Photos. Stickers. Apple cache. Audio. Send later. Double tap. Camera. To quickly access the send later area, I recommend doing a four finger single tap near the bottom of the screen and voiceover lands on the AM PM. PM. Selected. Picker item. Adjustable. Two of two. Swipe left. Gives you the option to select the seconds. Zero zero minutes. Selected. Picker item. One of sixty. Five o'clock. Selected. Picker item. The hours. Five of twelve. Friday. September 27th. Picker item. And the days. Swipe right until I hear the minutes and then flick up or flick down and I'll set the time to 30 minutes. Zero zero minutes. Selected. Tw 29 minutes. 30 minutes. 31 of 60. Selected. I'll set this text message to be sent out on September 27th at 6.30 p.m. Swipe right until I hear the send button. Send button. Double tap. Send message. A unique sound to let us know that this text message is to be sent at a later time. Send. Dictate. Button. Now I'm going to go back into the message app and then find this particular text message. Message. Send later. This is how I can tell the message is scheduled to be sent at a later date and time. Text field. Tomorrow 6.30 p.m. Button. Apps. Button. Messages. Your iMessage. Hello Rita and Jasmine. 6.30 p.m. Two effects. I have this text message scheduled to be delivered on the 27th. But if I need to make any changes to it, touch and explore. I hear the edit button. Tomorrow 6.30 p.m. edit. Button. Double tap. Let's take a look at the three different options that are available. Swipe right. Send message. Button. Edit time. Button. I double tap if I want to edit the date and time of the send later text message. Delete message. Button. If I no longer want to send this text message, double tap on the delete button. Delete message. Button. Delete message. Tomorrow 6.30 p.m. Button. I do want to mention two things when it comes to sending a text message at a later time. You can send a text message up to 14 days ahead. And if you do have a scheduled text message and your phone is turned off, don't worry, your message is scheduled to be delivered on that specific time since that message is in a placeholder at an Apple server. So with iOS 18, you now don't have to worry if you plan to send a text message in the middle of the night because now you can schedule it to be sent at an appropriate time. When it comes to smartphones, there's always the discussion. Are you an Android user or you're an iPhone user? And then there's that wonderful conversation about what color is your bubble? Maybe it's a good thing that I can't see. But this conversation may no longer be an issue because we now have RCS. RCS stands for Rich Communication Services. Pretty much it's going to replace the SMS and MMS, which are traditionally used with Android. And with iOS 18, Apple now supports RCS. There are many benefits with RCS. I'm just going to list a few. RCS has end-to-end -end encryption. It supports high-res videos. Read notification indicates when someone is typing a text message, supports tap back, recognizes emojis, and supports many other features. To save some time, I've already composed a text message, which I'm going to send to Hershey who's an Android user. Hershey and Ava are co-facilitators at our Android Insight. And if you're an Android user, definitely check out our website at ibugtoday.org. One finger touch and explore on the text message that I just created for Hershey. Messages. Harsha Dravidi. Swipe right. Message. Text message bullet RCS. It announced that this was an RCS text message. Text field. Is editing. Hello from India. This is a test. Word mode. Insertion point at end. Swipe right until I hear the send button. Send button. Double tap. Send message. Now, let's take a look at the response I received from Hershey. Harsha Dravidi. Copy. 1.44 AM. I'm going to respond back to Hershey, but this time I'm going to respond back by using back tap. Listen to all different options. Drag. More. Translate.
Copy. Tap back. Double tap. Tap back picker. Hard. Button. Actions available. Let's listen to the options that are available inside here. Hard. Button. Thumbs up. Button. Thumbs down. Button. Ha ha. Button. Exclamation mark. Button. Question mark. Button. Police car emoji. Button. Face with tears of joy emoji. Button. Face blowing a kiss emoji. Button. Red heart emoji. Button. Face with heart shaped eyes emoji. Unamused face emoji. Button. Add custom emoji reaction. Button. Message. Copy. Swipe up until I hear add custom emoji reaction button. Add custom emoji reaction. Button. Double tap. Add custom close custom emoji picker. Button. 14 emoji found. Now I'm going to do a touch and explore and find the right emoji that I want to send to Hershey. Smileys and people category. Double tap. Selected. Smileys and people category. Swipe right. Frequently used category. One finger touch and explore till I find the right emoji. Smileys and people. Face with big pleading eyes. 81. Double tap. I send a text message to Hershey with that emoji. You're touch and explore on that text message. Harsha Dravidi. Copy. You reacted with face with big pleading eyes emoji. By default, RCS is automatically turned on. But if you're interested to find out where the setting is to turn this feature on or off, let's take a look at inside settings. Settings. Double tap. Search. Search field. Four finger single tap near the bottom of the screen. Lands on the apps button. Apps. Button. Double tap. Selected. Apps. Swipe right. Messages. Button. Double tap. Allow messages to access. Heading. Swipe right till I hear RCS messaging button. RCS messaging. Button. Double tap. RCS messaging. Switch button. Off. On. Apple's explanation. Sending and receiving messages with RCS uses wireless data. Cellular network identifiers may be shared with your carrier and its partners. And now with iOS 18 and RCS, an Android and an iPhone user can send text messages in harmony. With the introduction of iOS 18, we now have a dedicated password app. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to ask SIRI to open password app. And since I have a device that doesn't have a home button, it's going to require Face ID to grant permission. Alert. Face ID. ID authenticated. Never forget a password again. Let's take a look at what happens when you first launch it. Apple's explanation. Welcome to the passwords app. Heading. Easily save and fill passwords with autofill. Never forget a password again. Secure encryption. Automatic protection to keep your password safe. Seamless syncing. Use your passwords on Mac, iPhone, iPad, Vision Pro, and Windows PC. Continue. Button. Double tap. Apple's explanation. Passwords app notifications. Heading. You will be asked to allow notifications from the passwords app. If you allow notifications, passwords will notify you when passwords are saved, when changes are made to shared groups, and if any of your passwords are compromised in a data leak. Continue. Button. Double tap. Alert. Passwords would like to send you notification. Apple's explanation. Notifications may include alerts, sounds, and icon badges. These can be configured in settings. Don't allow. Button. Allow. Button. This is a personal choice. Double tap on the allow button. Now that I'm in the main screen of the password app, let's take a look at what's all in here. Two finger swipe down. Passwords. Heading. Search. Search field. A quick way to search for your passwords. Dictate. Button. All 197 items. Button. This is telling me how many passwords that I have saved. Passkeys. Two items. Button. Codes. Zero items. Button. This is where to find two-factor authentications. Wi-Fi. 11 items. Button. This is where I'll find all my Wi-Fi passwords. Security. Inside here, I can find out if any of my passwords are at risk. Deleted. Zero items. Button. Shared groups. Heading. New group. Button. Apple's explanation. Share passwords with family. Share passwords and passkeys safely and securely with your family. New password. Button. This is where I can create a new password. And this is a very high level on all the buttons that are available inside the password app. Now let's take a look at how I can edit. In this case, I'm going to take a look at the Wi-Fi and remove one of those Wi-Fi passwords. Wi-Fi. 11 items. Button. Double tap. Delvis. One of the Wi-Fi passwords that is saved is a password to the Apple Store. Swipe right until I hear it. Apple Store. Unsecured network. Button. Click up. Or flick down until I hear forget. Forget. Double tap. Alert. Your iPhone and other devices using iCloud Keychain will no longer join this Wi-Fi network. Swipe right. Forget. Button. Double tap. And that is how I can update passwords inside the password app running on iOS 18. The last section in the password app is how to create a new password. Four finger single tap near the bottom of the screen lands on toolbar new password button. Toolbar new password button. Double tap. Let's take a look at what's all in here. Swipe down. Cancel. Button. New password. Heading. Save. Dimmed. Button. Text field. Is editing. Website. App. Or label. Insertion point at start. User. Text field. Password. Text field. 
Add notes, text field. Inside the section, Apple made it very simple. All you need to do is enter the website or any relevant information as well as the password. And if you want to make any notes to it, to exit out of this section, four finger single tap near the top of the screen. That's on the cancel button. Cancel button. Double tap. Passwords, heading. Let's take a look at the next button on the bottom toolbar. One finger touch and explore until I hear new group button. New group button. Double tap. Let's see what's inside this page. Two finger swipe down. Shared passwords and passkeys. Heading. Apple's explanation. Add trusted contacts. Create a group to share passwords and passkeys across their devices. Choose what to share. Each member of the group decides which passwords they share and can delete them at any time. You're in control. The person who creates the group can add or remove others. Continue. Button. Cancel. Button. Swipe left. Continue. Button. Double tap. Let's take a look at what's on this screen. Two finger swipe down. Cancel. Button. New shared group. Heading. Create. Dimmed. Button. Group name. Heading. Text field. Is editing. Name. Insertion point at start. Sri Roy. Owner. Button. Add people. Button. Apple's explanation. To invite someone to the group, they must be in your contacts. And those are the fields that need to be filled in if you want to share a password. To exit out of this, four finger single tap near the top of the screen. That's on the cancel button. Cancel. Button. Double tap. New group. Button. If you're currently not using any password management tool, then you might want to consider using Apple's native password app, which is available on iOS 18. One of the biggest changes in iOS 18 is inside the Photos app. Many have either liked it, or let's just say they didn't say some kind words. Inside the Photos app, there's a lot of things going on, and in today's presentation, we'll take a high-level view of what is inside the Photos app. One finger touch and explore until I hear the Photos app. Photos. Double tap. We'll start from all the way in the top left corner. You'll know right away on the main screen inside the Photos app, things look very different. For example, there are no tabs on the bottom of the screen, but are replaced by a series of buttons. And below these buttons and covering about two thirds of the screen are some of the photos found in the photo library. Below the photo library, you'll find a series of headings that Apple has created. So let's take a closer look at all of this. Swipe right and take a look at the buttons on the top of the screen. Photos, 3,233 items. This is a total of all my photos and videos. Swipe right. Search button. Inside the search field, you can use keywords such as dog, Christmas, or a specific date, a place, an event. Or if you label individuals on the Photos app, then you can search for those individuals. Swipe right. Select button. Double tap on select button. Brings up the photo library, which looks just like our previous photo library with tabs in the bottom of the screen prior to iOS 18. Profile button. Double tap on the profiles button. Provides the information about myself, but it also includes all the photos that I'm in, as well as all the photos that I'm in with someone else. Also inside here, you can see the synchronization status of the photos inside iCloud. Now let's take a look at what all we can find inside the photos app below these buttons. As I mentioned before, this is where you'll find some of my photos in the photo library. And below these photo libraries are these headings. If you want to see what is inside each of these headings, double tap and then swipe right will take you to those photos or videos inside each of these headings. And to easily navigate through this, I'm going to invoke the rotor and go to headings. Headings. Click down. Recent days forward. Button. Heading. Inside this headings is where you'll find all my most recent photos in chronological order. Click down. People forward. Button. Heading. Inside here is where I'll find all the photos that I've labeled with individuals' names. Click down. Pin collections forward. Button. Heading. Inside this heading is where you can find different categories that you have labeled. Click down. Memories forward. Button. Heading. Inside this heading is where Apple takes the videos and photos and then creates a memory slide with music. Click down. Trips forward. Button. Heading. Inside this heading is where I'll find all my photos and videos that are put together after I take a vacation or go to a certain place. Click down. Featured photos forward. Button. Heading. Inside this heading, you'll find series of photos. There'll be one prominent picture shown. Click down. Media types forward. Button. Heading. Inside here is where you'll find all your videos, your selfies, screenshots, screen recordings, and things like that. And also inside here is where you'll find your hidden photo album. Click down. Albums forward. Button. Heading. Inside here is where I'll find any of the photo albums that I created. Click down. Shared albums forward. Button. Heading. Inside here is where I'll find any photo albums that has been shared. Click down. Wallpaper suggestions forward. Button. Heading. Inside here is where it takes my photos and videos and makes it into a wallpaper. And also here is where I'll find the settings where I can rearrange these headings. Even though the photos have gone through a major change, hopefully I've given you a good overview of how it works running on iOS 18. 
Voice Memo running on iOS 18 has added some new features. So let's go into Voice Memo and see what they are. Since I'm running iOS 18, the settings layout has completely changed. So let's see how to access Voice Memo in there. One finger touch and explore until I hear settings. Settings. Double tap. Settings. Heading. Prior to iOS 17, the apps did not reside in its own category. But with iOS 18, the apps are listed in one category and they're listed alphabetically. Four finger single tap near the bottom of the screen lands on the apps button. Apps button. Double tap. Selected apps. Search. Search field. One easy way to find an app is to search for it. I double tap to bring the insertion point and I can either dictate or type the app name. In this case, I'm going to type voice. Tap V. O. I. C. E. This will bring up some of the results. Swipe right until I hear voice memo. Hello voice button. Voice dream button. Voice memos button. Double tap. Allow voice memos to access. Heading. I want to focus on the two new features. Swipe right. Clear deleted. After 30 days. Button. And swipe right until I hear stereo. Stereo recording. Switch button. Off. One of the new features in voice memo is clear deleted. I swipe left until I hear it. Clear deleted. After 30 days. Button. Double tap. Now we're presented with five different options. Two finger swipe down. Immediately. After one day. After seven days. Selected. After 30 days. Never. Mine is scheduled to purge after 30 days. To go back, four finger single tap near the top of the screen. Lance on the voice memos back button. Voice memos. Back button. Double tap. Voice memos. Back button. The next new feature inside voice memo is the ability to record in stereo. Swipe right until I hear stereo recording. And then double tap to toggle it on or off. Stereo recording. Switch button. Off. On. Off. Now that I went over some of the new features inside Voice Memo, let's take a look at the app itself. SIRI to open Voice Memos. Voice Memos. Apple's explanation. What's new in Voice Memos? Heading. Transcripts. Automatically transcribe speech into text. Stereo recording. Add greater dimension to your recordings. Save us. Make edits and save to a new recording. Continue. Button. Double tap. Back button. I'm going to go ahead and record a new audio track. Four finger single tap at the bottom of the screen. That's on the record button. Record button. Double tap to start the recording. To save some time, I'm going to come back after the recording is completed. Now that I recorded a voice memo, let's take a look at a new feature in iOS 18 with voice memo, which is transcribe. One finger touch and explore until I find that audio file. New recording 77, 652 AM. Transcription available. Indicating that the transcribe is available. Duration, 13 seconds. Button. Double tap. New recording 77. Text field. One finger swipe right until I hear the more action button. More actions. Button. Double tap. Share. Button. Swipe right until I hear view transcript. Button. View transcript. Button. Double tap. View tra Replace. Button. Let's take a look at what's all going on in here. Two finger swipe down. New recording 77. Text field. 652 AM. Duration. 13 seconds. Playback settings. Button. Trim. Dimmed. Button. The next element is where I'll find the transcribe. Welcome to the IBA Cafe. This is where we take an in-depth look at an iOS app and today we'll focus on iOS 18. Overall, I thought it transcribed it pretty well. The only thing that I saw as a mistake was it says in-app instead of in-depth. And I also want to mention, not only can it transcribe what you record, but you can also import an audio file and it'll also transcribe it. It's good to see that Voice Memo now provides transcribe with iOS 18, which can definitely be a very useful tool. This concludes the first part of the presentation and we'll open it up for some questions. All right. That is our first part of the presentation. We're going to open it up for some questions and comments now. So the way it's going to work is you're going to state your name. I'm going to call upon you. Then you can ask your question at the time. I ask that everyone else stay muted till the conversation comes to an end. And then we don't use the raise hand feature. And if you did ask a question, please uh, refrain from asking a second question so we can give others an opportunity. All right. Any questions on what I covered today so far? This is Deb. Yeah, this go ahead. Cool. All right, let's go Deb first. And when you um, went into your photos, um, which button did you say would make it like it was before, kind of? Yes, I know it was right at the beginning, but... Yes. Yeah. It's the select button. And when you, on the, you know, the first button after search is mm -hmm. select, and that will make it uh, the photo album screen be like the photo library like it was before. And you'll have those tabs in the bottom of the screen. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then make sure if you don't see it, hit that photo button on the top left-hand corner. That'll toggle it back to the, the main screen layout. All right, who's the second person? 
Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Uh, on the password app, um, I went, I looked at it a little bit, and it seems pretty straightforward, but then app- applying it isn't seemingly as easy. Um, it shows up all your uh, passwords that you already have on the on your phone, which is great. If you want to make a new one, okay, then you say make a new one, and then what? I'm confused about what happened. You know, I don't know for a hundred percent because I haven't had a chance to put a new password in. But when I looked at it, when I opened up a new password, it just told me to fill in all the fields, and then there was a, I believe, a submit button or an add button to it. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. I'll try it and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, who's next? Any questions? This is Chris. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. On the new features under iOS 18, as far as like uh, hiding apps and putting password on um, or requiring Face ID on, on certain apps to open them, do you know if there's any commensurate um, type of parental controls in the screen time that helps override any of that? That's a good question. I don't, I don't know about the screen time. I didn't really see anything about it. I know that if you do hide the app you know you you don't really get any information like you can't see it you can't search for it you can't mm-hmm. so i don't know if if you if you can't access it i don't believe screen time is going to indicate any usage mm. from it mm-hmm. but i can definitely take a look to see how when you have an app in when you hide that app in that hide folder if there's any data being captured because you can still use it you know, if you have authentication to it, you know, it does open up in that this folder. Is, yeah, Chris. Is, uh, right, but it'll be their face ID, it's not mine. That is correct. It is, it is the person who is authenticating right. it. Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks. All right. Misty? Yeah, go ahead, Misty. Um, these same features you're talking about, um, will they still do the same with the... um? Mac. That would be a good question that you can ask uh, during our Tuesday Mac bus call. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure Herbie would be able to provide you that information. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's next? You can mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'll uh, go ahead. Um, I'm still on uh, iOS 16. So to get, do I have to upload for 17, then go to 18? That's a good question. Now there is a setting from what I remember, and I don't remember how it works with iOS 16, if that feature was there or not, but I know in iOS 17, you can go from one version to the next, or there's one option way down on the bottom that takes you straight to the latest version. But if you like, I can look that up and let you know on the Monday night call. This is Herbie. Yeah, Herbie. Hello. The quickest way just would be just to go to your settings and then general and software update, and it'll tell you what uh, you can update to from there. So now, if you if you're if you're running iOS 16, can you do you have the ability to go from 16 all the way to 18? I just don't you remember. I would think you'd be able to, but it would tell you because it'll say you know update to iOS. You, you know it'll say what iOS is it sees that you can mm-hmm. update to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. But on I would the imagine list, you'd be able to. Yeah, I know in the latest versions, you can go to the next version or go all the way to the latest version. It's a good question. Uh, who's next? Going once? Twice? Okay, Herbie, if we can just go ahead and mute everyone and we'll go ahead and play the second part of the presentation. This is where I'm going to take a look at some of the iOS 18 site settings. I'm going to go ahead and start the second part of my presentation. In this section, I'm going to take a look at settings as it relates to iOS 18. When you go in and open settings, With iOS 18, you'll notice these buttons inside settings have been rearranged and it makes much more sense with the new layout. So let's take a look at inside settings. I'll do a one finger touch and explore until I hear settings. Settings. Double tap. Two finger swipe down. Take a look at the new settings. Settings. Heading. Search. Search field. Dictate. Button. Sri Roy. Button. Family. Button. Airplane mode. Switch button. Off. Wi-Fi. Button. Bluetooth. On. Button. Cellular. Button. And now, inside iOS 18, you'll notice that the buttons have been rearranged. Battery button. The battery button has moved up from previous version. VPN. Not connected. Button. General button. The general button has also moved up. Accessibility button. Accessibility button moved up right next to the general button. I'll skip through some of these settings. Camera button. Control center button. Display and brightness button. Search button. 
You'll notice in the previous version that Search and Siri were under one category. With iOS 18, Search and Siri has been separated. Siri, button. I'll skip through some of these settings. Standby, button. Wallpaper, button. Notifications, button. Apps, button. Probably the most impressive thing inside settings is now that all apps are listed alphabetically in one section. Inside iOS 17, you'll notice that the Apple native apps are listed in some manner, no one seems to know why. Then followed by the third-party apps, which are listed alphabetically. With iOS 18, even though Search and Siri have decided to part ways, it's good to see that the Apple native apps and the third-party apps have come together in one place, living in harmony, and that's because all of them are listed in an alphabetical order. Inside the Apps button, double tap to expand it. Selected, Apps. Two fingers swipe down. Search, Search field, Dictate, Button, Section Index, Adjustable, Cap A, Heading. I'll skip through some of these settings. ABC7 button, ACB link, button, AccuWeather, button, Acrobat. To go down this alphabetical list, continue to flick down. Cap B, Selected. Cap C, Selected. Cap D, Selected. Cap E, Selected. Cap F, Selected. To go back, alphabetical list, continue to flick up. Cap E, Selected. Cap D, Selected. Cap C, Selected. Cap B, Selected. Go to the previous screen, four finger single tap near the top of the screen, which lands on the settings back button. Settings, back button. Double tap. Settings, back button. When you do get a chance, I recommend look at inside settings, to see all the different changes that has been made with iOS 18. On iOS 18, we now have the ability to make each of these app icons on the home screen a little bit bigger. When doing this, it removes the name that is underneath each of these app icons. But as a voiceover user, whether the name is there or not, it will still speak the name of each of these apps. But let's see how to set this up. First, we need to get the home screen to be in the edit mode. To do this, I'm gonna do a touch and explore on any app on the home screen. Photos. Flick up or flick down until you hear the edit mode. Edit mode. Makes all the app icons on the home screen wiggle and thus it's in the edit mode. Double tap. Started editing. Four finger single tap near the top of the screen. Lance on the edit button. Edit button. Double tap. Swipe down. Add widget button. Customize button. Double tap. Finished editing. Touch and explore until I hear dim wallpaper button. Dim wallpaper button. Two finger swipe down. Selected small button. One of two large button. Two of two. I'll come back to this button in one second. Next, we have a few buttons that make these app icons much more visually appealing. Light, button, dark, button, selected, automatic, button, tinted, button. Swipe left until I hear large button, two of two. Large, button, two of two. Double tap. Selected, large, button, two of two. And now these app icons have become a little larger. Names that are noted below each of these icons are no longer there. And if I want to go back to the previous configuration where the app icons have their name, double tap on the small button, one of two. Small button, one of two. Selected, small button, one of two. And that is how to make these apps just a little bit larger without their names noted below or put these apps back to its smaller size along with its name. The true benefit of this setting is more of a visual. However, I'm being told that the home screen look much cleaner with these icons without their names noted below. With iOS 18, there's a name change, and then I'm going to show you how to do an iCloud backup, which is much simpler running on iOS 18. So let's go over these two things. Prior to iOS 18, my account, Shreeroy, was referred to as Shreeroy's Apple ID. But with iOS 18, it is now referred to as Shreeroy's Apple account. So let's take a look at this. I'm already inside settings. Settings. Swipe right until I hear my name. Shreeroy, Apple account. This is a small change, but I did want to bring it to your attention. Now, let's take a look at the next thing that I want to cover, and that is to do an iCloud backup. Since my voiceover focus is already on my name, double tap. Contact photo button. Swipe right until I hear iCloud button, and this is going to vary depending on what type of subscription you currently have. iCloud 2TB button. Double tap. iCloud plus heading. Swipe right. iCloud backup button. iCloud backup one hour ago button. Double tap. iCloud Backup. Apple's explanation. Automatically backup your iPhone so you can restore your data if you lose your device or get a new one. Learn more. Link. Let's take a look at some of the other settings. Continue to swipe right. Backup this iPhone. Switch button. On. Backup over cellular. Switch button. On. Apple's explanation. When not connected to Wi-Fi, 
Use your cellular network to automatically back up to iCloud. This may cause you to exceed your cellular data plan. Back up now. Buttons. Swipe right. Last successful backup. 9.41 a.m. This tells me when my last backup was successful. Swipe left. Back up now. Button. Double tap. Cancel backup. Button. And that is how to do a backup of your iPhone running iOS 18. Prior to doing any software update, just make sure that you back up your iPhone to either iCloud or to a computer. Sometimes we get this question during our Monday night bus is that can you remove the camera or the flashlight on the lock screen? Well, with iOS 18, not only can you remove this, but you can add others. So let's see how to do this. Touch and explore until I hear settings. Settings. Double tap. Settings. Swipe right until I hear wallpaper button. Wallpaper button. Double tap. Selected. Apple's explanation. Wallpaper from your lock screen. Touch and hold to add, edit, or switch between different wallpapers and widgets. Swipe right until I hear lock screen wallpaper button. Lock screen wallpaper button. Double tap. Settings button. Swipe right until I hear remove flashlight button. Remove flashlight button. Double tap. Remove quick action. One finger touch and explore until I find the done button located on the top right corner. Done button. Double tap. Done. Next, I'll put the phone to sleep by pressing the side button. Tap on the screen to bring up the lock screen. 2.26 PM. As I continue to swipe right, you'll eventually notice that there's only the camera button and I no longer have the flashlight button. Show notifications button. Camera off button. And that is how I can remove either the camera button or the flashlight button on the lock screen. Let's take a look at how I can add a new app onto my lock screen. And just for kicks, I'm gonna go ahead and add ChatGPT voice onto my lock screen. So let's see how to set this up. First, I need to open settings, one finger touch and explore until I hear it. Settings. Double tap. Settings. Swipe right until I hear the wallpaper button. Wallpaper button. Double tap. Selected wallpaper from your lock screen. Touch and hold to add, edit, or switch between different wallpapers and widgets. Four finger single tap near the top of the screen. Lance on the settings back button. Settings back button. Swipe right until I hear lock screen wallpaper button. Wallpaper heading current. Lock screen wallpaper button. Double tap. Button logo other. Two finger swipe down. Done button. Now it's going to present what is currently on my lock screen. Calendar date top widget button. Clock widget button. Add widget button. Depth effect button. Appearance button. Add quick action button. Remove quick action button. If I wanted to remove an app from the lock screen, double tap on remove quick action button. What I want to do is add a new app. Swipe left. Add quick action button. Add quick action button. Double tap. Inside here, there's lots of controls that I can choose from. One finger swipe right until I hear ChatGPT voice. Open ChatGPT voice. Control. Double tap. Add widget button. Four finger single tap at the top of the screen. Lands on the cancel button. Cancel button. Swipe right. Done button. Double tap. Done. Next, I'm going to press the side button to lock my phone. Tap on the screen to wake my phone. 1049 AM. One notification. Let's take a look at what's on the lock screen. Swipe right. Reminders. Tuesday 10 AM. Reminders. Swipe right. Open chat GPT voice. Off button. Not only can you remove an app from the lock screen, but you can also add an app to the lock screen. With the introduction of iPhones, we always had columns and rows on the home screen where widgets and apps reside. There are six rows and four columns. Prior to iOS 18, these had to be stacked next to each other. With iOS 18, we can now move an app or widget to a different row and column to an area where there is no app or widget next to it. So let's take a look at how to do this. I currently have the camera app and to the right of that is FaceTime. I'm gonna take the camera app and I'm gonna move it around on the home screen. Just so that you have a reference, I'm going to show you which row and column these two apps currently reside. FaceTime. Three finger single tap. Row two, column four. Next to it should be camera. Swipe left. Camera. Three finger single tap. Row two, column three. So I have the camera in row two, column three, and I have FaceTime in row two, column four. I do want to mention we've become habit to moving an app by simply doing a flick up or down and then select edit and then flick up or down and then select drag. Now performing these gestures will work if you're planning to move an app and have it be next to another app. But if you plan to move an app or widget where there are no other apps next to it, then you'll have to do a double tap and hold and then drag it around. Let's go ahead and move the camera app. Double tap and hold on the camera app. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and move it around without lifting my finger and you'll hear that the camera app is moving from different rows and columns. Started editing. Row 2. Column 4. Icon approaching border. Row 6. Column 3. Row 6. Column 3. Row 6. Column 4. I moved the camera app from row 2, column 3, all the way to row 6, column 4. Camera is editing. One finger touch and explore till I find the done button located on the top right corner. Done button. Double tap. Finished editing. Delvis. Three of three Wi-Fi bars. Status bar item. Camera. I do want to give you a heads up regarding this move. Visually, a camera app is located on row 6, column 4. But if I do a three finger single tap on the camera app, voiceover tells me this. Row 2, column 4. Since I moved the camera app, FaceTime took the spot where the camera app used to be. But as a voiceover user, it is providing the wrong information because the camera app is on row 6, column 4. On the screen, the FaceTime and the camera app are not next to each other, but VoiceOver is treating it as if they are. So hopefully Apple will address and fix this issue, but that is how you can move an app around inside a home screen. One of the biggest changes in iOS 18 is inside the control center. Previously, if you wanted to add an app into your control center, first you'd have to go to settings and then go to control center. And in there you add what you want to bring into control center. The control center inside iOS 18, you can now add any of the apps inside the control center. And pretty soon, app developers will have the ability to put their app inside the control center. Since you can truly customize the control center, you can have up to 15 different pages, just like how you can have 15 home screens on your iPhone. And you can move any of the apps within these different pages. So let's see how to set this up. Since my device doesn't have a home button, swipe right or swipe down from the top until I hear control center. Control center, airplane mode, switch button, off. Page two of five, music haptics, button. To move to the next control center page, three finger swipe up. Page three of five, sound recognition, button. To go to the previous page, three finger swipe down. Page two of five, music haptics, button. Three finger swipe down. Page one of five, favorites, airplane mode, switch button, off. Let's take a look at the layout of my control center on page one, but just keep in mind, what's on mine is gonna be different from yours. Four finger single tap near the top of the screen is gonna land on the last element on the first page of my control center. Selected, screen recording, button. Swipe left and listen to a few of the apps that's on my control center. Timer, button. Flashlight, switch button, off. Power, button. The power button inside the control center is new to iOS 18. Inside all active control center pages, you'll find add control button, swipe right. Add controls, button. Inside this control center, there is one app, which is the connectivity. Add controls. Connectivity is editing. Two by two. Word mode. In the bottom of this control page will be the add control button. Add a control button. Double tap. Add a con cheat grabber button. Inside here, you'll find all the apps that you could bring into the control center. Search controls. Search field. To save some time, I'm not going to go through all the apps that's available inside the control center, but we'll take a look at a few of them. Translate. Control. Magnifier. Control. Double tap to select the magnifier. Magnifier is editing one by one word mode. Now magnifier is added into my first page in control center. Four finger single tap near the top of the screen lands on the magnifier. Magnifier is editing one by one word mode. And to the left of the magnifier is my screen recording. Swipe left. Screen recording is editing one by one word mode. The next thing that I want to do is move the magnifier. Swipe right. Magnifier is editing magnifier button. Flick up or flick down to hear edit controls. Edit controls. Double tap. Magnifier is editing one by one. Let's take a look at all the different options that are available. Flick up or flick down. Show controls gallery. Resize to two by two. Resize to two by one. Delete. Stop editing controls. Activate. Default. Drag magnifier. Double tap to select it. Connectivity is editing two by two. I want to move the magnifier to the left of the screen recording. One finger touch and explore until I hear screen recording. Screen recording is editing one by one. Flick up or flick down until I hear drop magnifier before screen recording. Drop magnifier before screen recording. Drop ready. When it comes to moving apps around inside control center, there are two ways to do this. And depending on the situation, we'll determine which method that we would use. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's start off by bringing the control center. One finger swipe down the top until I hear it. Control center. Airplane mode, switch button, off. The first type of move is where I'm moving app from one page to the next. In this case, I'm gonna move the flashlight app from page one to page three. 
For me to be able to do this, I need to find an app in page one and bring it to an edit mode. So I'm going to find any app on the control center. Control center. Airplane mode. Switch button. Off. Flick up or flick down. Drag flashlight. Double tap. Connectivity is editing. Two by two. Three finger flick up until I get to page three. Page two of five. Page three of five. Home is editing. Four by six. My voiceover focus is on the home app. I'm going to drop the flashlight before the home app. Flick up or flick down and listen to the different options. Drops available. Cancel drag. Drop flashlight after home. Drop ready. Drop flashlight before home. Double tap. Drop complete. Just to confirm on control center page three, and it should be flashlight, then the home app. One finger touch and explore until I hear the home app. Home is editing one by one. Swipe left. Flashlight is editing one by one. And to finish the edit, perform the gesture to go to the home screen. The next example that I want to show you is how to move an app, in this case, the Focus app, move it in the same page, but to an area where there are no other apps around it. In order for me to move the Focus app, I cannot do a flick up or flick down and go to edit, then drag, and try to drop it in an open area. It just won't work. So for me to drag the Focus app to an open area where there will be no apps to the left or to the right of it, I need to do a double tap and hold and then drag. So let's see how this works. Once again, I'll perform the gesture to get to the control center. Control center. Airplane mode. Switch button. Off. Next, I'm going to go ahead and find the focus app. Pr focus. Button. Double tap and hold. And then I'm going to drag it around. Row 4. Column 1. One thing to keep in mind, don't lift your finger as you drag around. Row 3. Column 2. Row 3. Column 3. Row 3. Column 2. I'm going to lift my finger and drop it here. Row 4, column 2. Connectivity is editing 2 by 2. And those are the two different ways that you can move an app inside the Control Center. Next, I'm going to take a look at how to navigate between different pages in Control Center. You can have up to 15 different pages, just like your home screen. Let's take a look at how I can move around different pages. I currently have five different pages in Control Center. Three finger swipe up. Page 5 of 5. Connectivity. Airplane mode. Off. Button. Now, if I want to add page six, first thing I need to do is get my voiceover focus on a widget. So one finger touch and explore till I land on a widget on page five. Airplane mode, off, button. Click up or click down till I hear edit and then double tap to select it. Edit controls. Connectivity is editing, four by eight. Three finger swipe up will create page number six. Page six of six is editing. Next, if I want to add any widgets on page number six, I'll do a touch and explore until I hear Add a control button. Add a control button. Double tap. Add a con sheet grabber button. Inside here, you'll find multiple different choices to bring into the control center. Two finger swipe down, let voiceover read what's on the screen. Search controls, search field, text size, magnifier, voice memo, dark mode, flashlight, stopwatch, screen recording, zoom. To save some time, I skipped through many of these options, but I'm going to go ahead and add hover typing over to the control center. Hover typing. Double tap. Hover typing is editing one by one. So now with iOS 18, I can navigate between different control center pages as well as create a new control center page and then add different widgets to that control center page. For everyone who enjoys having widgets on your iPhone, you're going to enjoy iOS 18. And that is because you can easily customize your widget to either be small, medium, or large. And these widgets, you can resize them on the fly. But just keep in mind, widget varies in size, which will impact any apps that reside on the home screen. Previously, if you wanted to change the widget size, you'd have to go in and completely create a new widget. So let's see how this works. I'm going to do a touch and explore until I get to my battery widget on the home screen. Batteries, SVR 12 PM, 99% charged. And then I'll do a one finger triple tap, also known as the long press. Actions of widget small, dimmed, button. It says small widget is dimmed because that is my current widget size. Widget medium button. I could change the battery widget to a medium size. Cap L button. Double tap and I can change the battery widget to a large size. Edit home screen button. Remove widget button. Dismiss context menu button. Widget medium button. Double tap and I change the battery widget from small to medium. Batteries. Three batteries. I'll do a one finger triple tap. Widget small, button. Widget medium, dimmed, button. Swipe left until I hit the small widget button. Widget small, button. Double tap. 
Settings. Batteries. SVR 12 PM. 99% charged. And now I move back from my medium widget back to my original small widget. And keep in mind, if any app got moved from home screen one to home screen two, they will not move back to home screen one when you change the widget size. The next feature I'm going to talk about is only for devices that are 15 Pro, Pro Max and newer. When you're looking to buy a new phone, there's a lot that you take into consideration. And probably one of those will be the battery. And the question will be, how long will my battery last? Previously, to address this issue with software, Apple has put in a tool called Battery Optimizer. So how does this work? During the charging process, it will charge your battery up to 80%. It waits a few hours and then it will charge the remaining 20%. And this is based on previous charging habits. So this way it prevents it from overcharging throughout the night. Prior to iOS 18, you could not change that 80%. But with iOS 18, you can change that to 85, 90, 95, or even 100%. So let's take a look at how to set this up. To save some time, I'm already in battery inside settings. Battery. Swipe right until I hit the charging button. Charging button. Double tap. Apple's explanation. iPhone learns from your charging and usage habits to help preserve battery lifespan over time. Learn more. Link. You can increase or decrease in the increments of 5 from 80 to 100. 100. Adjustable. Click up or click down. Change the percentage. 95. 90. 85. 80. And just like that, you can change your battery optimizer from 80% to 100%. Just keep in mind that this feature is only available on iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max, and newer. Another feature that is only available on iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max, and newer, and that is taking an app that is located inside the control center and assigning that app into the action button. So let's take a look at how to set this up. Once again, I'm already inside settings. Settings. Swipe right to hear the action button. Action button. Button. Double tap. Selected. Action button. Swipe right until I hear controls. Controls. Double tap. Controls. Adjustable. Swipe right until I hear choose controls button. Choose a control button. Double tap. Choose a sheet grabber button. This is going to provide all the apps that are located inside my control center. Two finger swipe down. Search controls. Search field. We'll take a quick look and I'll skip through some of these. Calculator. Control. Stopwatch. Control. Alarm. Control. Home. Control. Wallet. Heading. Wallet. Control. Tap to cash. Control. Watch. Heading. Ping my watch. Control. Also, I do want to mention, once third-party developers built their app to be in the control center, you can then add that app into your action button. So if you do have an iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max, or newer, with iOS 18, you can now add what is in the control center into your action button. This concludes the second part of my presentation where I took a look at the settings inside iOS 18 and we'll open it up for some questions. That's the end of our second presentation. Once again, we're going to open it up for some questions and comments. Just state your name and I'll call upon you. And uh, at that time, I just ask everyone else to stay muted. And we don't use the raise hand feature. So, Herbie, if you can just unmute everyone. This is Terry. Yeah, go ahead, Terry. Um, the, the dragon drop or you know using um, or, or sorry the the switching from one uh page or one part of a screen to another has been available for a long time when when you use touch and explore but i when i used to use it i found it very difficult to do so i was glad when they added the drag and drop feature now i don't know it is this the fact that you can now do it within a control center is that the new part of this method the two methods drag and drop or or um it, uh it, what do you call it explore uh touch and explore yeah the reason um that you wanted to do the one finger double tap and drag is if you want to move an app or widget to an area where there are no other apps. Like for example, let's say you have a home screen and there's nothing on that home screen and you want to move that widget or the app to let's say column two, row three. You cannot do that by flicking up and down and go to edit and then drag and drop because it'll put it in column one, row one. Terry? Mm-hmm. 
Um, I guess what I'm hoping is that if you have to use that method, and I don't know if that's a bug or they're going to, I don't know, but I hope it's easier to do than what it used to be because, boy, that that method of, of using your um, touch and explore and moving your, you know, one double tap and hold and then moving your finger boy for me that was always a problem so mm-hmm. i was really glad when they did the drag and drop and and it's been available for a number of years yeah i hope they'll someday do the drag and drop it within the control center so we won't just have to do the touch and explore but maybe i'll have to experiment with it to see if it is easier now yeah you only have to do that if you want to move something to an area by itself if it's going right. to be next to any other apps or widget, then you can do the, the swiping, uh, clicking up or down and then go to edit and drag. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's next? This is Dan. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I noticed in settings when you were going through it, there was a standby button. Uh, do you have a, can you tell me anything? What does that do? I apologize, uh, Dan, uh, Dan, the voiceover was speaking in the background for me. Uh, can you repeat your question again? Sure. I noticed when you were going through settings, there was a standby button. What does that do? Standby button. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember standby button. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, are you talking about when I was going through the, the sheet where they had all different options to pick from, or was this in settings? That was in settings. I will take a look at that and maybe we can follow it up on the Monday call. Standby and settings, okay. Because there is a standby. Mm. There's a stand mode. Um, no, this is this said standby when you were running through it. Okay. I will take a look at it. Okay. I'll check it out on Monday night. Yeah, yeah. I'll look at it after the call. All right. Uh, who's next? Any questions? All right, Herbie, why don't we go ahead and mute everyone and we'll just go to the last part of the presentation where I'm going to cover accessibility and voiceover. Go ahead and finish my last part of the presentation by taking a look at some features of iOS 18 inside accessibility and voiceover. On our iPhone, we can either swipe or tap to perform an action or even say H-E-Y-S-I-R-I or S-I-R-I to open some type of action. But wouldn't it be nice if we could give a verbal command to open some of these features? Well, with iOS 18 and site accessibility, we now have a new feature called Vocal Shortcuts, in which we can give a verbal command to open certain features inside our iPhone. So let's see how to set this up. To save some time, I'm already inside Accessibility. Accessibility. Swipe right until I hear Vocal Shortcuts button. Vocal Shortcuts. Off. Button. Double tap. Let's take a look at what's all in here. Two. Finger swipe up. Back button. Vocal shortcuts. Heading. Set up vocal shortcuts. Button. Apple's explanation. Teach your iPhone to recognize a custom phrase that you can say to quickly perform an action. Audio is processed on iPhone. Learn more. Link. Double tap on the link can provide you additional information about the vocal shortcuts. But let's take a look at how to set this up. Swipe left till I hear set up vocal shortcuts button. Set up vocal shortcuts. Button. Double tap. Two finger swipe up. Cancel. Button. Set up vocal shortcuts. Heading. Apple's explanation. You'll choose an action and record a phrase in order to teach your iPhone to recognize your voice. Continue. Button. Double tap. Siri. Heading. Inside here, it's broken into two sections. The first section covers SIRI shortcuts and the second part covers systems. Two finger swipe down. Siri request. Button. Shortcuts. Heading. Now inside the first part, this area is going to vary depending on if you created any SIRI shortcuts. In my case, I've created many. I don't want to bore you to death by listening to my SIRI shortcuts, so I'm going to take you to the next part, which is the system heading. System heading. Below are all the settings that we can create a verbal shortcut to. App switcher button. Camera button. Control center button. Flashlight button. Front camera button. Home button. Lock rotation button. Lock screen button. Mute button. Notification center button. Reachability button. Screenshot button. Scroll down button. Scroll up, button, shake, button, Siri, button. If you're tired of saying H-E-Y-S-I-R-I or S-I-R-I, well, you can be very creative and create your own wake word. Spotlight, button, volume down, button, volume up, button. Now let's take a look at what's inside accessibility that we can create a vocal shortcuts to. Accessibility, heading, 
Accessibility shortcut, button. Assistive touch, button. Background sounds, button. Classic invert, button. Color filters, button. Control nearby devices, button. Dim flashing lights, button. Full keyboard access, button. Hover typing, button. Live captions, button. Live recognition, button. Live speech, button. Magnifier, button. Music haptics, button. Smart invert, button. Speak screen, button. Switch control, button. Vehicle motion cues, button. Voice control, button. Voice over, button. Now we can create a unique verbal command to open voice over. Zoom, button. Zoom controller, button. As you can tell now, there are many choices that you can create a verbal command to perform an action inside system and accessibility. Now it's time for me to create a vocal shortcut. In my case, I'm going to create a vocal shortcut for the app switcher. Swipe left until I hear app switcher button. App switcher button. Double tap. Two finger swipe down. Choose action. Back button. Cancel button. Custom phrase. Heading. Apple's explanation. Add a speakable phrase that is unique to this action to run it. On my iPhone 15 Pro Max, to get to the app switcher, I need to go from the bottom and swipe up until I hear the third pop. But instead of performing this gesture, I'm going to create a vocal shortcut and I'm going to call this verbal gesture switch. Text field is editing. Enter command name. Insertion point at start. I can either type or dictate. In my case, two finger double tap to start the dictation. Switch. Two finger double tap to stop the dictation. Inserted switch. Touch and explore on the virtual keyboard until I hear go and then double tap. Go. Back button. Two finger swipe down. Cancel button. Say switch. Heading. Apple's explanation. And I'm going to repeat the word switch three times. Teach iPhone to recognize this phrase by saying it three times. Switch. 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 In my case, it didn't recognize the last switch. Swipe right. Button. Say switch one last time. Heading. Switch. Action is ready. This is the confirmation that everything is good. Heading. iPhone will listen for switch and perform action. App switcher. Continue. Button. Add another. Button. Double tap if I want to add another vocal shortcut. Swipe left. Continue. Button. Double tap. Back button. Now let's see how this works. First, I'm going to get to the home screen. Batteries. SVR 12 PM. 88% charged. Now, instead of performing the typical gesture that I would use to get to the app switcher, and remember, I don't need to press any button. All I need to do is say switch. App switcher, switch, app switcher, settings, active. And if you're running iOS 18, you can now create vocal shortcuts to perform many actions instead of having your fingers perform that action. Another new iOS 18 feature inside accessibility is the music haptics. This might be beneficial for someone who may have hearing impairment or if you just like to listen to music, but you want your phone to also vibrate to the tune. I do want to make a quick note at the time of this recording, this feature is only available in the native Apple Music app. Let's go see how to turn this feature on. To save some time, I'm already inside accessibility. Accessibility. Swipe right until I hear music haptics button. Music haptics off button. Double tap. Music haptics switch button off. Apple's explanation. When available. Music Haptics provides haptic feedback for supported songs. Learn more. Link. Available apps. Heading. Music. Settings. Apps which support Music Haptics. As I mentioned before, it currently only supports the native music app. Now let's turn the feature on. Swipe left until I hear Music Haptics. Music Haptics. Switch button. Off. Double tap. On. When you enable this feature in accessibility, it will automatically add this feature in Control Center. And if the music supports this feature while listening to the song, I will feel the haptic feedback on my phone. To test the music haptic, I'm going to ask SIRI to play a song. 18 and Life by Skid Row now playing. Due to copyright, I'm just going to tell you what is going on. The music is being played. I'm going to bring up the control center. Touch and explore on control center until I hear music haptics. Double tap to turn it on. I can hear the song being played as well as my phone is vibrating to the tune of the song. To stop this, bring up the control center, touch and explore until I hear the music haptics, and then double tap to stop it. With iOS 18, Apple now introduces two more soothing sounds to enlighten you inside accessibility. First is the relaxing sound. During a fire, we can hear the wood crackling. And second, the interesting sounds of crickets during the night. The kind of sound that we occasionally hear when Michael presents his first question during the Monday night halftime trivia. So let's take a look at how we can enable these two unique sounds. 
To save some time, I'm already inside accessibility. Swipe right. I hear audio and visual button. Audio and visual button. Double tap. Audio heading. Swipe right until I hear background sounds button. Background sounds off button. Double tap. Background sounds. Switch button off. Apple's explanation. Place background sounds to mask unwanted environmental noise. These sounds can minimize distractions and help you to focus, calm, or rest. Since this feature is turned off, swipe left until I hear background sound. Background sounds. Switch button off. Double tap turns it on. And let's listen to some interesting sounds that we hear during the night. On. Two finger swipe down and let's listen to the different options that are available. Place background sounds to mask unwanted environmental noise. Sound, night, button. Night volume, 20, adjustable. Since this is adjustable, flick up will increase the sound. 30, 40, 50. Flick down to decrease the sound. 40, 30, 20. Use when media is playing. Switch button on. If you want the sound to be played along with the background audio, then turn this feature on. Volume with media, 20, adjustable. Play sample button. Double tap. Stop button. Play sample button. To stop the sample, double tap. Let's take a look at some of the other sound samples. Two finger swipe down. Sound, night, button. Balanced noise, bright noise, dark noise, ocean, rain, stream, selected, night, fire. Double tap to select fire. Selected, fire. And those are the two new relaxing sounds that are available inside accessibility. Let's conclude with voiceover. One of the new features in iOS 18 with voiceover is when you turn voiceover on, you can also now get a haptic feedback. So this would be a, another good way to indicate when voiceover is on. I do want to mention that this feature only works when you press the home button three times or press the side button three times. If you do ask SIRI to turn voiceover on, you do not get that haptic feedback. So let's see how to set this up. To save some time, I'm already inside voiceover. Swipe right until I hear audio button. Audio button. Double tap. Voiceover sounds and haptics button. Double tap. Sounds heading. I'm going to invoke the rotor and go to headings. Headings. To easily search for it, click down until I hear voiceover feedback heading, and inside there is where I'll find this feature. Voiceover feedback heading. Swipe right until I hear voiceover startup button. Voiceover startup button. Double tap. Haptic switch button off. This is a toggle switch. Double tap to turn it on or off, and I'm going to turn it on. On. Now, if you press the side button or press the home button three times, you will get a haptic feedback indicating that voiceover is on. And with iOS 18, Apple now introduces delay before selection. So what is delay before selection? Let me give you an example. Let's say you received a long email. To save some time, instead of doing a one finger swipe right continuously, you decide to do a two finger swipe down. It started reading that email to you automatically. As you were holding the phone, you accidentally touched the screen and voiceover got redirected to that element. And now you kind of have to start from the beginning again. Well, delay before selection will prevent that from occurring. I do want to mention a few things first. Delay before selection only impacts touch. It does not impact any other gestures that you perform. And the maximum time you can set the delay is two seconds. And finally, this will be a global setting, so it's going to impact wherever touch is being applied. So with that said, let's take a look at how to set this up. To save some time, I'm already inside voiceover. Swipe right until I hear delay before selection. Delay before selection, zero S button. Selected, delay before selection, zero S. By default, the delay is set to zero seconds. Two finger swipe down. Seconds, 0, 0.00, text field, decrement, dimmed, button. This is dimmed because the default is set at zero second delay. Increment, button. Let's listen to Apple's explanation. The delay before voiceover will select items when touching the screen. In this example, I'm going to go to the extreme and move it to two seconds. Swipe left until I hear increment. Increment, button. Double tap. 0 0.05. Each one finger double tap will increase the delay by 0 0.05 millisecond. 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 1.95, 0 2.00. Next, I'll perform the gesture to get to the home screen. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and test the delay before selection, which I have configured for two seconds. And what is happening now is I have my finger over the phone app, but VoiceOver has not announced it. And it won't announce until two seconds have passed. 
dock, phone. After two seconds, VoiceOver announced the element that my finger is touching. And don't forget, this only impacts touch. Performing any other finger gestures works as normal. And the most important thing to remember is this is a global setting. When using the virtual keyboard, you'll have to hold the finger down for the specified amount of time. In my example, it was two seconds. Then only would VoiceOver announce that key. So if you're one of those individuals that always accidentally touches the screen, this might be a good settings for you to play with so that you have a much better experience using VoiceOver. One of the new features in iOS 18 is the ability to add speech to the rotor. The benefit in this is now I am able to select different voice talent right from the rotor instead of me having to create an activity inside VoiceOver setting or configure it in per app in accessibility. To save some time, I'm currently inside VoiceOver. I swipe right until I hear speech button. Speech heading. Now there are some new features in here. Two finger swipe down. Primary voice heading. Samantha. English, United States, button. I have Samantha as my default voice talent. Additional voices, heading. This is where I can go in and add additional voice talent. Add rotor voice, button. Let's go add another voice talent. Double tap. Done, button. Let's take a look at how I can add Alex as one of my voice talent. And just to save some time, I have already downloaded Alex. Alex, using 911.7 MB, button. Double tap. Alex. Touch and explore until I hear the done button. Double tap. Done. Button. Now that Alex is selected, I'm going to go back into speech, swipe right until I hear additional voices. Primary voice. Heading. Samantha. English. United States. Button. Additional voices. Heading. Alex. English. United States. Button. And now Alex has one of my voice talent. Now that I got the voice talent selected, I need to add voices to my rotor. Once again, I'm already inside voiceover. Swipe right until I hear rotor button. Rotor. Button. Double tap. Rotor items, button. Double tap. Selected, words. Inside rotor, there is a new selection called voices. Swipe right until I hear it, or I can quickly do a three finger swipe up until I hear it, and then double tap to select it. Voices, selected, voices. Now that I have selected voices, I'm gonna exit out of rotor settings, and then invoke the rotor and go to voices. Voices. Now I can select either Alex or Samantha. Click up or click down until I hear Alex. Alex. Swipe right, and now you'll notice that my voiceover talent is Alex. Reorder voices. Button. Draggable. Actions available. Invoke the rotor to voices. Voices. Flick up or click down until I hear Samantha. Samantha. Primary voice. Voiceover inform me that Samantha is my default voice talent. Swipe right, and now I'll be hearing Samantha voiceover voice. Navigation style. Now that I added Alex as one of my voice talent, Let's take a look at how I can make some configuration changes within Alex. Once again, I'm inside voiceover settings. Swipe right until I hear speech. Double tap. Selected. Speech. Apple's explanation. Voices added here can be selected in the voice rotor. The first thing that I can change is the pitch. Swipe right until I hear it. Pitch change. Switch button. On. The next option is to detect language. Detect languages. Switch button. On. Apple's explanation. VoiceOver will switch voices when text in another language is detected. The next option that I could configure is pronunciation. Pronunciations. Button. And keep in mind, I could configure Alex in so many different ways by changing the pitch or the pronunciation or language, which means I could have Alex voice talent 1, Alex voice talent 2, and so on, based on each having different configuration. Now that I showed you how to create and configure Alex, now let's say I no longer need Alex and I want to remove him from the rotor. Let's take a look at how to do this. To save some time, I've already opened speech inside voiceover settings. Speech. Heading. Swipe right until I hear Alex. Edit. Button. Primary voice. Heading. Samantha. English. United States. Button. Additional voices. Heading. Alex. English. United States. Button. Flick up or flick down until I hear delete. Delete. Double tap. Add rotor voice. Button. If you're one of those users that use multiple voiceover talent, with iOS 18, you now have a much easier way to toggle between these different talents. Previously, I showed how you can add Alex to voices in the rotor. Let's see what kind of configurations we can actually do inside Alex. Once again, I'm in speech inside voiceover settings. Two finger swipe down. Speech. Back button. Alex. Button. Play. Button. Rate. Heading. Decrease speed. Image. Slider 50%. Adjustable. Increase speed, image, pitch, heading, waveform badge minus, image, slider 50%, adjustable, waveform badge plus, image, volume, heading, 
Volume lowest. Image. Slider 100%. Adjustable. Volume highest. Image. Pitch range 100. Adjustable. WPM minimum 50 words per minute. Adjustable. WPM maximum 500 words per minute. Adjustable. Audio effects. Heading. Equalizer. Button. Reset voice settings. Button. Reverts all voice changes to default. Let's go back and take a look at the equalizer. Wipe left until I hear it. Equalizer. Button. Double tap. Equalizer. Two finger swipe down. Alex. Back button. Equalizer. Heading. Inside here, you could fine tune Alex. And this might be very beneficial for someone who might be hard of hearing. Enable. Switch button. On. The Apple's explanation. Make personalized refinements to speech audio by lowering or boosting frequency ranges. Ultra lows. Heading. Ultra lows zero. Adjustable. 0, 0.0 decibels. Lows. Heading. Lows zero. Adjustable. 0, 0.0 decibels. Mids. Heading. Mids zero. Adjustable. 0, 0.0 decibels. Highs. Heading. Highs zero. Adjustable. 0, 0.0 decibels. The range in the decibel is from negative 20 to positive 20. 0, 0.5. 1, 1 1.5, 2, 3, 3.5, 4, 7, 18, 18 dot, 19, 19 dot, 20. Now let's take a look at the negative range. 0, minus, minus, minus 1, minus 2, minus 2 point, minus 3, minus 3 point, minus 4, minus, 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 minus 19 dot, 5, minus 20. Once the configuration is done, swipe right until you hear the enable button. Enable. You double tap to select it. Switch button, on. Four finger single tap near the top of the screen. That's on Alex back button. Alex, back button. Double tap. Alex, Hello. back button. My name is Alex. With iOS 18 and speech, you can now truly customize a voice talent. One of the new features in iOS 18 inside the rotor is live recognition. Live recognition is supported on iPhone Pro Series from 12 all the way up to 16. And that's because live recognition requires the use of LiDAR. Prior to iOS 18, if you wanted to access, you would do a four finger triple tap. And some of the features comes with live recognition are people detection, door detection, text, and recently furniture. So let's take a look at how to set this up. To save some time, I'm already inside voiceover. Swipe right until I hear rotor button. Rotor button. Double tap. Rotor items button. Double tap. Selected words. Actions available. Three finger swipe up to scroll down to find live recognition. Live recognition. Selected live recognition. Now that live recognition is added to my rotor, I'll invoke the rotor. Live recognition. Doors. Off. Let's take a look at all the features that are available inside live recognition. Click up or click down to go through the cycle. Scenes. Off. Point and speak. Off. Text. Off. Furniture. Off. People. Off. Doors. Off. And just a heads up, you can turn all or one of these features on. Let's check out the door detection. Flick up or flick down until I hear it. Doors. Off. This is a toggle. Double tap. Turns it on or off. And I'm going to turn it on. On. Now I'm going to move my camera around this room. Two doors detected door 8 feet turn handle or knob. If the voiceover focus is on the door detection, double tap to turn it off. And if I want to exit out, swipe right until I hear stop recognition button. Double tap to select it. Stop recognition button. Typing mode. And that is how to invoke the rotor and get live recognition on iOS 18. And this concludes my presentation, taking a look at some of the new features of iOS 18 inside some apps, inside settings, inside accessibility, and inside voiceover. I hope you found today's presentation very useful. And if you're currently running iOS 18, hopefully there were some features that I showed you that you were not aware of. And if you're not currently running iOS 18, hopefully after this presentation, you might consider installing it because the features that come with iOS 18 can make your life a little bit easier. Okay, this concludes our presentation. We'll take some final questions. Just state your name and I'll call upon you. We don't use a raise hand feature. So Herbie, if you can just unmute everyone and we'll get started. This is Terry. Yeah, go ahead, Terry. It's interesting you're talking about those those last features because I have an SE 2020 uh, and I have iOS 18 in there. And it does allow me to uh, access those things. Now, the one I didn't try or one of them that I did not try was the door detection because SE2020 doesn't have the LiDAR feature. But now I'm curious because it's listed. I wonder if it'll somehow show up. I, I don't know. I know that the LiDAR is what allows us to give that actual distance, like it was telling me 10 feet. Mm -hmm. um, so my understanding of these features were only available on devices with the LiDAR. So if you do have it, please you know, check it out and let us know tomorrow because I'd love I to will. know that. 
Yeah. Okay. It'd be great. Thanks. Thank you. This is Deb. Yeah, go ahead, Deb. So I have a 12 many that also would not support that live recognition. All those features or all those toggles are there, but they don't seem to work for me anyway. Okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting it to work because I, I know it requires that LiDAR, which, you know, I don't know why Apple can't put it in all the devices if it helps accessibility. You know, that doesn't make sense to me. But thank you. This is Valerie. Yeah, go ahead, Valerie. I noticed this on your phone. What is hover typing? That's a great question. As soon as I picked it, I said, I'm going to get in trouble because I have no idea what hover typing is. To answer the question, I don't know. But I will look it up and I will present it in the Monday call because I knew somebody was going to ask me this. Okay. But thank you. This is Deb again. Yeah, go ahead, Deb. So hover typing, what I've read about it, says that it's a feature and it's more for our low vision uh, people, that it makes the text bigger above the keyboard when they're entering text. That would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense. I, I, was, I was visualizing that it blows up that key when your finger is over it, but that definitely makes sense. So thank you. You saved me the hassle of looking it up. Also, um, I did look at standby that I think it was Dan who mentioned it. And standby is when you put your phone on a charger in a landscape mode and your phone behaves like a like an alarm clock, like a like a fixed type of a clock. That's what they call it, a standby. Uh, this is Dan. Yeah, Dan. Um, I don't understand. Say that, I don't understand that. You put it in landscape mode. And then what? Then your phone behaves like a display clock on a, on a stand. And then you could change the clock, um, the, the, the look of the clock. You can change it to different colors. It's so that someone who's sighted can have a desk clock on their, on their desk. So, they, so you put it in a standby mode and it behaves like that. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. My yeah, other really, question. I'm sorry? Go ahead. No, no, it's really a visual, visual aspect thing. of yeah. the clock. Okay, thank you. My other yeah. question is, I noticed when you were in the equalizer, uh, you were changing the uh, the decibel settings. How did you change the... It's flick up, flick down. I realized I didn't say that, yes. Okay, flick up, flick down. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out, because I did when I was listening to this right now, I said, oh, I didn't mention that. Yep. This is Debbie. Yeah, Desi. Um, I was going to say about um, standby mode that I believe it's for when you have one of those kind of charging stands where you can actually put your phone in the stand so then it stays in landscape mode because it has to be able to, my understanding is that it has to be able to uh, stand there, you know, on its own, which you can't... You, if you put it on its side in landscape mode, it's just going to fall over. So I have a Mac save, you know, like a Belkin Mac save. Mm -hmm. It's a 45 degree angle stand. Right. So I just basically move it as, as a landscape mode because it's Mac save. Just kind of, right. and then it becomes standby mode if I turn it on. Right, exactly. But if you just have your phone on standby mode and you don't have that kind of a charger, I'm not sure you can use that. Can you? Um, I don't, I, I don't know if it, the, the phone has to be actually in a, in an angle. I don't know if it, like, I can try it on a flat, um, Mac save to see if I change it to move it to the landscape mode. I, I have a feeling it's supposed to be on a, like you said, a charging stand that is, um, in an yeah, angle. That, that's the way it was explained to me. So yeah, I don't I think... know. And then I also wanted to comment about what Terry Ann was saying, um, because, about the um the live recognition stuff because um they are in the app i i can see that they would be there but i'm thinking they wouldn't like deb said they wouldn't be active like they're they wouldn't really do anything mm -hmm. um but i'm not sure about that and the last thing i wanted to say is that um, I just wanted to congratulate you on a really nice job. That was a ton of stuff you went through. And, it, it was. Uh, 
And I, I'm really impressed that you uh, were able to figure that all out so well. <laughs> so thanks. Oh, thank you. Um, I, you know, there is that one also feature, one other feature that I didn't realize was there on the live recognition was, you know, we use seeing AI uh, short text to read text. They also have a short text in there now. So, and it worked pretty well. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I you know, so. I, I don't quite understand why Apple just couldn't put it in all the phones because it because it is an accessibility feature. Exactly. You know, it doesn't make sense. Any other questions? Well, if not, we'll go ahead and call it. I just want to say thank you to Herbie for helping me out. Julie is going to help post these um, these audio files. I want to thank each of you guys for attending, asking these questions. I really appreciate it. Definitely come to the next workshop. Herbie's going to talk about Braille screen input. If you're a Braille user, he's going to go in pretty, pretty detailed about it. Definitely check out our workshop next on the Saturday, the fourth Saturday of the month, and we'll get these posted on our on our um, platform pretty soon. Oh, I think, yeah. Yep, Julie does that. And well, Terry, yeah, Terry. It, I believe the Apple workshop is not this coming it's Saturday. Saturday. But the 26th, I believe. Yes, the fourth Saturday. Fourth yeah. Saturday. Okay. We will call it a day. Herbie, if you can just go ahead and stop the recording, and then we will see you guys next month on the cafe.